Hello and welcome to The Bookish One. My name is Dan and today we are going to be taking a look at Ian Esselmont's Dancer's Lament. So Dancer's Lament is the first novel in Ian Esselmont's Path to Ascendancy. It's currently a trilogy but I, I think there's another book um, sort of coming out soon. Um, but it's, it's currently a trilogy and it is set in the epic fantasy world of Malazan or Malazan which I think is how you're meant to say it but that sounds weird to me so I'm going to say Malazan. Um, if you've got a problem with that, roast me in the comments down below and I'll, I'll take you all on. Um, <laughs> but no, um, this is my first um, sort of steps into the world of Malazan, um, which um, actually came through Philip Chase, who is a, another um, booktuber. Um, hi, Philip, if, you, if you're watching this. Um, he, uh, I saw his review of this book. Uh, I thought it sounded very interesting, so I bought the entire trilogy. Um, on Kindle, and I've read the first book, absolutely blown away. Um, Dancer's Lament um, on Kindle comes to just over 400 pages, um, and it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, I've got to say, first of all, what is it about? So Dancer's Lament follows Dancer, who is a young sort of out-of-work assassin who comes to the city of Li Heng in search of employment. And he gets into various um, sort of scrapes and, and struggles um, along the way. Um, and during that time when he's in Li Heng, um, the city is currently uh, sort of under siege um, from Itko Khan. Itko Khan? It, Itko Khan. <laughs> uh, which is a neighbouring um, city. Um, and the novel centres on Li Heng. Pretty much 95% of the action in the book um, is, is set in Li Heng. Um, First of all, I want to praise Ian Esselmont's prose. His style is so easy to get into. I was a bit worried um, going into this book. I've heard a lot of good things about Malazan, whether it be the Esselmont stuff or uh, the, the Ericsson stuff. Um, but I have heard that it's quite tricky to get into. I know that the first book of the Malazan book, The Fallen, which is sort of Ericsson's um, side of it, um, can be quite tricky to get into. Um, so I was a little bit apprehensive. However, saying that and having read it, Ian Esselmont's style is one of the easiest writing styles I have ever seen uh, and one of the easiest reading styles as well. It takes you into this world which is fully established um, and, and gives you this city of Li Heng which is so well realised that genuinely it feels like somewhere that could exist in our world. Um, it's one of the most phenomenal world building um, sort of uh, books that I've, I've come across really. And I don't say that lightly. I don't I don't say it sarcastically either. Lee Heng genuinely feels so rich, diverse um, in both its, its populace, in its religions, in its cultures, in its warfare, uh, in its magic systems, everything. And, and going off of that. Um, our characters so we've got uh, dancer um and we we've got um you know a couple of other mages uh, magicians um as as well uh, including silk and a ho um and and the protect protectress um um these characters genuinely feel so real to me um and they're so well realized the relationship between dancer and a particular female character it tugged at my heartstrings. There's a particular scene, and I'm going to remain quite vague on it. But if you read this book, you'll you'll understand which scene I'm talking about, uh, where Dancer goes to see this this girl again, and it it tugged at my heartstrings. Genuinely, the the way that Esselmont has realised these characters and their relationship through the first sort of two hundred three hundred pages of this book, um, really really means that by the time you get to that scene, um. It hits you, and it hits you really hard. And I, I've got to give Eric, um, Ericsson. I've got to give Esselmont uh, the props here. Um, I know that Esselmont's written six of the books set in the world of, of Malazan, uh, and then he's got this trilogy. I'm going to call it a trilogy. This path to ascendancy. Um, and I've got to say that if this is if this is him at his, um, I don't want to say his worst, but you know what I mean. That I'm I'm in for a heck of a ride because I I cannot wait to read the other books by by him and eventually uh, get to to Ericsson as well. Um, further on from that, the the concepts and the ideas in this book I think really need to be to be talked about. Um, whether it be the the concepts of of religion or warfare, love, loss, self worth. 
um, again, they're all so well realised. And you would think, I've, I've just named sort of four or five things there. And it's quite a short book. And like I say, it's not overly complicated. It's not a sprawling, ow, it's not a sprawling fantasy epic. Um, it's, it's, but it is. And the way that Hesselman weaves that into the, the narrative and into his, his prose and into his characters means that you never feel overwhelmed. There was never a scene here where I felt out of place or I didn't know what was going on particularly. And I, again, I've got to give him his props for that. Um, it was it was fantastic. Um, I would definitely uh, recommend that if you were looking to get into the world of Malazan, start here because... Like I say, looking at Gardens of the Moon, which is the first book in, in Ericsson's Book of the Fallen series, which is 10 books long, that's, I think it's something like 700 pages, 600, 700 pages, which for most fantasy readers <laughs> is, you know, it's a long book, but in fantasy that's sort of accepted. I have heard that sort of just chucks you into this world. I would say give this first book and give this trilogy as a whole um, give this one a, a shot first because you'll you'll get to know the world and as I understand it as well there's some characters in here that potentially move into into other stories I don't know yet I'll have to find that out um, for myself and that's what's really exciting here is that I, I feel like this world is, is genuinely lived in and, and like I say it's so well realized there's a lot of um, of aspects to this world that I'm really intrigued in the Crimson Guard they appear I know that they've got a, another couple of books um, by by a, someone I don't know whether they appear in Ericsson's books but they felt so real you hear about legends and myths and creatures and demons and gods and it it it's one of those worlds where I feel like I I switched on the TV and I've watched an episode of something and it just felt real it just felt real. That is the best way that I could describe it. And like I say, for a book that on Kindle is is barely over 400 pages, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Um, I can only give this, this book props. If there's any issues that I had with it, there's a particular sort of subplot um it was it was one scene mainly where where dancer and his um his mage friend uh, and again I'm going to leave that there <laughs> but the the relationship between the, those two is is so well worked and, and it really gives the book a, a good bit of comedy which I think it needs because it is quite a dark book um you know it's it's about siege and warfare and and loss and there's a lot of that in there uh, and there's a lot of dark sort of subtext and subplots going on there was a scene um, where they enter another world, potentially, another dimension that kind of pulled me out a little bit. Um, again, it was only a couple of pages, so I didn't mind. And, and, and immediately after that, I was right back into it. Uh, that was the only bit that, that sort of pulled me out a, a little bit. So that would maybe be my only criticism here. Um Otherwise, like I say, um, if you've watched Philip Chase's video and, and you've gone into this book, you know, it's it's well worth it. And, and like I say, if you are looking, if you're scared of, of going into Malazan because you think you've got to start with Gardens of the Moon um, by, by Ericsson, I don't think you do. Like I say, I'm taking this journey. I'm going to be reading probably this this trilogy and then looking to go into to um, the, the Ericsson stuff. Um and I'll do it like that, but I feel like this world is, is so well recognised. And I, I feel as well like I could have read this trilogy, or at least this book, and in some ways I, I would have had a complete story. I, I think there's 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 obviously threads left dangling, but ultimately this is just a great book. And um, I, I again, I commend um, someone for, for that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I, I really need to say here. Um, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic book. I'm not going to rate it, I, I, you know, out of 10. It's completely subjective. Um, you'll have to just read it and find out yourself. But I would definitely recommend Dancer's Lament by uh, Ian Esselmont um, in the Path to Ascendancy trilogy um, by uh, by him. Get it on Kindle, get it on paperback, get it however you can, because it's absolutely fantastic. I'm reading the second one, Dead House Landings, right now, um, and I'm about 25% into that. 
and already it's it's so different but it's it's so well done and i can't wait to get you a, a review of that as well but anyway guys i'm going to leave it now because i'm rambling um and if you've got any questions comments suggestions um you know feedback for this review please do pop it in the comments they should be down here somewhere i think uh pop them in the comments down below and uh, i will see you again very soon thank you so much for watching guys bye, -bye.